Check out the L2 putter with the largest allowable sweet spot, and it turns heads. This is Golf Smarter. The whole idea was to make the putter head so performing that you wouldn't have to look at the ball when you putt. That was the original style. It was like a face forward style. As the uh, anchor rule came into play, we started to uh, revamp it into a traditional style. So it's the same head. And uh, the biggest feature of it is it's big and heavy. So the, the toe to heel uh, size is six and a quarter inches, 620 gram weight. And what that gives you is just a high MOI, highest in the industry. Uh, three and a half inch sweet spot zone or impact area, which allows you a, a lot of range of impact on the ball. And all these things put together means you can take a bigger stroke and let stroke size determine the distance instead of hitting the ball. Uh, when I was playing with it yesterday um, on the course, because my playing partner had a couple in her bag, um, I was amazed at how off my line was on putting. And then I was able to put the putter behind the ball and first set up the ball how I would do, generally do it. Then I put the putter behind it and saw that I was aiming to the right of the pin. And I'm always wondering, why is my putts going two inches to the right? And you know, I'm like, my distance is right. And I was absolutely blown away of how accurate I was able to feel with that. Well, definitely. I mean, standing it up and stepping back and looking at your line is a, is a much better option than standing next to it and try to e estimate where you're going to point it. Uh, the other thing you can do with this kind of a, of a read is, uh, which helps a lot that I find, is to uh, you step back, take your line, and last time what you can do is line the ball up, the putter up with the hole, even though there's a break. It gives you like a zero reference point that you can line the putter up with. It's always accurate. Then from that, what you do is I, I put my foot behind the putter, use my foot as a reference for that zero break line, and then I'll move the putter face to what I think the actual break is. It gives you a great reference between zero and break. It teaches you to read more break into the putt than most people do. Most people try to guess it, and, you know, the ball's round. So, you know, actually, to, if I need to go over there, I need to move the putter onto this side of the ball. And it's real easy to stand behind the ball and move the putter and think you've changed the, the angle of the putt, but you really haven't. So it's a round putter, so go around the ball. And uh, doing that is a great reference. So you can do all kinds of fun things like that with this club. The alignment's one of the biggest things, but looking at the hole when you putt, uh, binocular vision, depth perception, it's what we do, we're predators. Depth perception is where we get our touch and feel. Putting is a, is a product of touch and feel for distance, not direction. You don't feel it into the hole, you feel the distance. So you apply touch and feel in your distance control, and now you're using your depth perception. If you can do that while you're putting, what an amazing experience. What you get from that also is by looking at the hole while you putt, you're giving your mind something to do. It's like a little kid that wants to get into trouble. And so uh, giving it, looking at the hole, it, it, it engages it into the stroke. Another option is looking at the putter head. Watch the head go back and through, keep the face square. Everybody mesmerizes on the ball, but you really don't need to with this putter. The other thing that um, I have a lot of trouble with, which I had no trouble at all playing with it yesterday, was inside four feet. Oh yeah, and what, what makes a huge difference, um, inside four feet, what I try to tell people to do that, they, again, it's an option. Uh, the way the putter's designed on the bottom, it's got quite a slope on the bottom, uh, an upslope. So what you can actually do is let it lay back a little bit, and you actually get your hand slightly behind the putter face. And in doing so, what you're doing is you're lofting your face. So all it requires is just a little bit of a, of a backstroke and follow through, uh, and you're going to get the ball up and rolling instantly because you're hitting the ball a little more below the equator. On a longer putt, you'd want to actually do a bit of a forward press by de-lofting it. You're hitting the ball right in the middle of the equator. So you, anything you put into it is exactly what you get. So um, that, again, that's a, that loft option is a huge advantage and it gives you good tempo. Um, I find a, a, a three count tempo on a, on a stroke helps a lot too because it's a big head. It's really hard to get it moving on the one count. You're like, ugh, 
So <laughs> your hands get a little slightly behind the ball. But if you use that three count with a slight forward press like Jordan Spieth does, uh, Phil Mickelson does a big forward press. It's just a little one, two, three, and it gets the ball, the club moving much smoother. My first choice for putters is always a center shafted putter. And that, I was like, oh, perfect. Because to me, I'm looking down the shaft at where the ball is, where, where my line is. Having a putter with a high MOI that isn't center face balance doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The idea is you want to keep the face square through the ball. The, the sequence of importance is hitting the sweet spot, keeping the face square, and then stroke direction. Click on the link below to subscribe to our free weekly interviews on the Golf Smarter podcast at golfsmarter.com.